We are approaching five minutes after, so I'm going to go ahead and kick us off here. Um, first off, if we have anyone who is on the call today who is new or has not introduced themselves before, I would love to invite you to speak up, say hello, introduce yourself, um, and we'd love to know how you're using Cooper. Uh, hi, this is uh, Deepak Ketwal, and uh, I am Chief Architect for the UKG. And uh, this is first time I am getting into this uh, call. And my interest is we have the uh, both VM and the Kubernetes workload, and we are looking for similar solutions. So that interested me to joining into this call. Very cool. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, be sure and um, Stefan, the... your... oh, okay. um, I'm joining this call. I'm not a QBX user, actually, uh, but I'm joining um, because of the design proposal about unified control of privilege, resource access, with second multipliers. Great. It's great to have both of you. Be sure and find uh, the other community resources if you haven't already. Um, of course, there's uh, Kubernetes Slack, uh, mailing list, and, and other resources on the community page. And it looks like we can go ahead and dive into the agenda items, starting with VM condition metrics design documents. Let's see, who wants to cover that? I don't have a submitter noted. This is um, this was put on last week's agenda, and we kicked it oh, on because there's nobody to talk about it. Um, Shirley uh, sent an email to the mailing list today, basically asking if there was any objections to what it was proposed. Great. That's right. I need to wake up before I start the meeting, don't I? Um, and we're missing the people we were missing last, light, uh, last week for covering that as well. So. Yeah. So I guess if anyone has an objection, please yep. raise it on the mailing list. I agree. Sounds good. All right. Um, and then we have an item from Hiller, and I'm not, I don't see him on today. Yeah, hi. It looks like Daniel didn't, didn't make it today. Yeah. Um, but I can say a couple of words about this. Um, so the discussion got moved to the mailing list. Uh, it's a it's a big topic. Um, there's a lot of interest in testing Kubevert on top of CentOS Streamline, but there are issues. Uh, the main one being that Istio doesn't work. Um, so the 126 test lanes, which were initially based on CentOS 9, got moved back to CentOS 8 for that reason. Uh, and there is a periodic running uh, on CentOS 9. To, to test that. Um, I will actually PR also a an actual lane for 120, 126 CentOS 9, but it won't be uh, running on all PRs and it won't be blocking anything. It will be fully optional. It's just to be able to test any given PR against CentOS 9. Um, yeah, big, big discussion on the mailing list if anyone wants to chime in. Good information, thank you. All right, and then um, Alicia, I saw you, you have yeah. an item here. Yeah, so um, there is a proposal I opened before Christmas, and we are working on this, Stefan and I. Um, it's basically using SACOM notifier uh, to simplify certain operation in um, Qvert. So we, it's quite, 
uh, has a lot of material. So if any of you had the chance to read um, and want to ask questions, but uh, it will be, it, it takes some time to go through, but I hope you will find this interesting and um, we, we would love to have feedback so far. Um, only Roman replied to in the mailing link discussion and uh, we will appreciate other feedback. Um, but yeah, basically this is um, a project, a new project we have started that use second notifiers and uh, in the motivation, yeah, you can see the use cases we have uh, thought about. Very cool. That looks like a lot of helpful information. All right, so the mailing list is a hot place to be, it looks like this week. Um, if anyone has input on these items, definitely um, find your way to the mailing list to add additional input. Um, are there any other ideas, thoughts, comments, questions, or any of that. Yeah, nature. if any of you already had the chance and asked questions, it's, uh, both Stefan and I, we are here, so. Um, or we could, do it, we could do it offline. All right, it looks like that's gonna be an offline for this week then, at least. Okay, thanks. Um, are there any specific blockers, uh, Alice, or anything like that to moving forward, just so that that's um, clear in everyone's mind? Yeah, I think feedback would be, um, if it's an interesting idea and if it's something that the uh, Qver community will be, will be willing to do, um, uh, we have, um, so there are some, 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 operation that are already implemented in, in Qver that could be done differently using this, uh, this new tool or using second notifiers. Um, and uh, I'm working on the SCSI persistent reservation. This is a topic uh, I already raised in the mailing list uh, some months ago. Um, there is not a very nice solution uh, to this. Um, Details are again in the mailing list, uh, but this uh, project and proposal could also help uh, help me actually solving the SCSI persistent reservation. So you can find all the details in the proposal, but uh, this is actually the first uh, first approach uh, to see if uh, if the project is interesting for for Cuba. All right, then um, scroll crazy. Oops, there we go. Thank you for bringing, bringing that up, Alicia. It looks like a lot of serious work. Thank you. All right, jumping to open floor then, it looks like a presentation recording. That's cool. Yeah, I just wanted to share a recording of my presentation about Qbeard. There mentioned some basic stuff, how Kubert is working, uh, how data plane is working and networking and the patch, patches we implemented, uh, which are currently in proposals. They're not matched yet. So there might be some interesting information with the beautiful charts. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Ah. I'll Thank send you. a link into chat. I will. Definitely check that out myself. And then it looks like you also have an item on. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the on second data. question is, uh, I just tried to use data input cron and data source uh, resources using uh, CDI. And I just found that uh, they're not working properly in my case. And also I haven't found any documentation, like official documentation. Uh, I just found some article in internet how I can use that. 
So I just wanted to ask if anybody uses this feature, if it's production ready, and are there any plans for enhancing it? So Red Hat ships it in their OpenShift uh, virtualization, um, and uh, it works pretty well there. So um, I put a link to the upstream documentation uh, in your question there. Um, but if you have any issues, feel free to contact me. Uh, OK, thank you. We consider it more or less feature complete at this point. So. So it is not going to be deprecated and I can um, contribute to this and rely on using this. Absolutely. Yes, we, uh, we, we use it for what we call the golden image workflow, where essentially we create a bunch of data import crons that download, you know, RHEL and CentOS and Fedora and a bunch of other images into your uh, cluster. And then when you, uh, <clears throat> you know, instantiate a new VM, Instead of downloading it, we just clone it from where, from the uh, instances in the cluster. Uh, and if you have storage that you know supports CSI cloning or snapshot cloning, it's much faster than downloading. So. Amazing, thank you. Can I uh, mention you in my issue so you would uh, able Absolutely. to help me to solve that or maybe guide me to exact place where I can find the where issue is. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. All right, and then it looks like we have a reminder from Andrew Burden, Kuvert Summit. Um, last week of March will be an online. Uh, Andrew, do you want to speak to that? Yep, um, I'm, I'm hesitant to, uh, to um, put it down in writing because we, uh, we are still finalizing the details. And the last time I sent out a thing, I mentioned potentially early week of April. That's now no longer a thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to nail this down and get some finalization. Um, and hopefully I'll have it by the end of the day. But, you know, we never know. But just to get people thinking about it, um, yeah, the CFP will be open really, really soon. Um, and I guess if I could just take a quick um, poll from people uh, here that give the talks and, and write proposals. Would you rather, if, if it's three weeks for one and five weeks for the other, would you rather a shorter CFP and longer to for notification and writing of the talks? Or would you rather a longer CFP um, and a shorter time to write? People are going to wait to the last day anyway. <laughs> I was sitting there trying to imagine the difference between my inner adult voice and my inner um, procrastination voice. So it doesn't matter. So three weeks for both. Now you're just threatening cruelty. <laughs> All righty. Well, we'll 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 see where I land. Thank you. All right then. Actually, Andrew, on that event, the Kubert Summit, do you have any kind of overarching goals, like how you want the uh, first big event to go? Like one thing maybe that would make it feel like an actual success to you? Um, it, it would be good to get so many proposals that we have to um, have difficulty choosing uh, which talks go. I think to me, that would be a big success. Um, yeah. A grand enthusiasm to share the work that you're doing, that you're contributing, um, even if it's something that you know might be just very, very specific. Um, I think it's really important. Like this is an opportunity for us to all kind of like um, to share and kind of like put in front of other people. Hey, this is a thing that I'm doing that you know you maybe because you work on something else you wouldn't see. Um, and obviously, if you're working on it, you think it's cool. And sharing that, I think, is is really important. And this is our opportunity to do that. Cool. Thanks. I totally put put Andrew on the spot there. So, All right. thank you. Uh, it looks like we have a PR picked up to go ahead and jump to. If anyone has I, any other PRs that they're interested uh, in, uh, this is what I'm. 
sorry yeah this is this is what i'm on this is the uh release notes documentation as far as um to the yeah, update the our release notes process ahead of the um the the new release cadence um so this i think i updated this about a month ago it's been uh pretty quiet through the um the december break period i'm just trying to yeah be nice to have this merged so we can um, move on with it so if anyone has the capacity to or if anyone's got a problem with it um please it's there and uh yeah would, would like to move on definitely thank you all right if we can get reviewers to approve on that or comment otherwise if it needs any other adjustment we can get back in gear All right, and it looks like we have a few bugs picked out. If anyone has bugs specific that they want specific attention on, feel free to drop them on the agenda while we're going through these, and we'll try to get to them. All right, let's see what we got. Packet loss when trying to ping a VM. Guess the network definition could be helpful for one thing. All right, and we'll jump to device plugin. Uh, I don't know if anyone recalls there was a bug in the device plugin framework recently. I don't know if it might be something similar. Would it be a bug that's still open? Do you think, Alicia? Yeah, I there's something like this, I think. But I don't know if it's a little bit different. Yeah. 
but there should be that this two of them I, I record something in the device plugin maybe something completely different but No, it should not be. I think it's uh, just Kubernetes one dot twenty five. So uh, in the issue we have is running on older version. So it's not should not be related. Yeah, I'll have a look at the MDev issue. Uh, I also mm -hmm. ping Vladik uh, to ask if we can uh, chime in. Um, Yep. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Or if there's some kind of uh, overlap on network addresses or something. Thank you for uh, dropping a comment on there. All right, then it looks like that gets us through everything on the agenda. I don't see anything added last minute. Oh, um, Andrew, I see your comment. Something to pull it up. I don't know if the, how related it is, but it mentions um, then a different issue with device plugin failing. Um, oh, gotcha. For other people in the Kubernetes community, and it's no longer maintained. Not even a channel. Good catch. All right, then. Um, I actually had a brief question about asking a question. Um, looking into some of the Newman pitting, um, 
and seeing that there's a little bit of a chicken and egg in the vert launcher pod, because if you want to prevent the emulator thread, uh, so like using emulator thread isolation is obvious enough, but there are uh, a couple other processes, including the vert launcher process itself, that end up being able to steal um, time from pinned threads for VMs. And my main question is, as we're diving into that, um, can, can I jump into the Kubert dev Slack or is there, should I like steer that kind of stuff to mailing list for better visibility or I know I've asked questions before and they get a little bit lost in the noise. So just hoping to have good conversation when we bring it up. Otherwise, I'll put it on the agenda. As a, Kath, as are you aware event. about Itamar PRs about uh, CPU, dedicated CPU? Um, if you PRs? have PRs going, I should definitely find Itamar those. as a POC. I think it might be interesting for you. Yeah, let, let me let me find the PR. I will paste it in. in the... Yeah, I think Itamar's PR addresses exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but you're it's... in the containerized data importer repo, by the way. Oh, good call out. I need coffee. Jad, do you have the PR or no? Find it. Uh, can can paste it. Yeah, it's the second one. Which one? This one. The second one. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Another I'll second in, in the list, not the second tab. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huh? Oh. I thought <laughs> yeah, I, that one. I thought I did them in order. I guess I didn't. I skipped the first one. Awesome. Thank you. That is going to be helpful. Cool. All right, then. Well, unless there is anything else to add, um, I will go ahead and adjourn this week's meeting. Going once, going twice. Actually, um, Go ahead. can I ask a quick question? So I know that this is kind of a tangential topic, but um, I know a couple of weeks ago, I haven't written it on there, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to catch you before. Fine. Um, is there any need um, for attestation for confidential computing? Um, any any additional hardware needs? I know that um, there was some work being done for legacy SUV and SUV ES. Does, do you guys need any hardware to to work on third and fourth generation uh, AMD stuff. Uh, Larry, there is... It's sorry. Sorry, it's been a few months since I've uttered the phrases. Could you refresh my memory? Is it like SEV ES? Is that the latest generation? Um, actually, the latest generation is SEV SNP. Um, SNP, okay. Yeah. And so I was just, I know that, you know, we had talked and there was some access to some some of the older hardware and uh, with, you know, we just released the fourth generation. I know that those are kind of first and second generation. So just calling to see if, uh, you know, I, I generally try to attend, but I missed uh, a couple of the last ones due to being on holiday. So I uh, figured I would follow up and see if there's any need there. Uh, Larry, we haven't merged the legacy SUV patches yet. Um... But if there is a hardware available, I think, I mean, it's, I mean, with even newer hardware, you could still test the um, legacy. Yeah, yeah, you can test legacy on the the modern hardware as well. It just allows for uh, additional availability. I I ask because um, Jorg from Sousa um, was asking about. Um, because he's, I guess, he's working on that as well on the Kubevert side with Jim Felig, and they were asking us about um, some need 
that they had and, and if it was something that they needed to go through the cube work community or if it was something that they needed to go through um, directly through us. And so I was just, is it something that you guys need? Are you ready for that yet? Or is it something that um, is still waiting? So uh, there is some open, open PR from Vaziri uh, that was kind of blocked because we couldn't test it uh, because lack of hardware. But I think, if, I think Brian is there. I mean, uh, we got some hardware and there was still uh, to setting up. But I mean, even the legacy are still uh, still open. So, but of course, if the hardware is available, we'd be it'd be easier uh, to also when we want to support a CVSMP, but again, uh, the CVES uh, uh, are still, uh, the PR are still open. Okay, uh, do you need any help from like any reviews or anything from the AMD side? We'd be happy to lend some eyes on those PRs. Um, is Brian on the call? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Um, I don't know regarding reviews. Uh, Alicia, some AMD people looking at the, at the PRs might be good. Um, we're just waiting. So I, I have a remote request access form to fill out. And then once we have that uh, in, then we should be able to access the nodes. I think they're already provisioned with Kubernetes. So just need to get that form in. And then hopefully we should be able to start testing those PRs, um, which will be great. So that's on the ICV stuff, the the older legacy confidential sure. computing. Yeah, well, so once just... we get there, then we should be good on the older stuff. And then regarding the hardware for the newer stuff, um, I guess if we had PRs ready, we'd have a reason to test. But at the moment, I don't think we have anything there. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, again, just uh, let me know if there's any way that we can offer assistance, sir. We uh, obviously want to enable you guys as much as we can, so. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Thanks, also, I, I don't know how, sorry, one last thing. I don't know how uh, okay. necessarily relevant it is, but if uh, there's some stuff that you guys are doing in Rust, I'm working with Red Hat right now to finalize some changes on the SP support. And so if you guys are looking to integrate that in any way, if you use Rust, that might be helpful. I, I'd, I'd be happy to point at that library as well. Yeah, I mean, there is, um, it's not related mostly to Qbert, but mostly it's lower level, but um, there is a community called BRT uh, where we have that's the uh, That's stuff. the same one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, exactly, okay. Yeah, I, I'm working with them on that and we're hopeful oh, yeah. that should be done fairly soon. So I just wanted yeah. to make sure. I mean, if, if you're already aware, I think that uh, it will be at the end what we really use for your station, so. Uh, I think we are on the same page. All right, those are great additions. Um, and with that, I think it sounds like we can go ahead and conclude. Thank you all for your participation and see you same time, same place next week. Have a nice week. Bye. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.